Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Thresholds podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by the Theater Threshold technical directors, which are myself, Caitlin Trimble, and the lovely Cameron Alvarez. Um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and do a bit of a workshop for you. Cameron had an excellent idea, something that I think a lot of us can either use a refresher on or something that maybe we're not too familiar with. So take it away. Hello, I'm Cameron Alvarez. Uh... I've been in technical theater for a long time. Uh, I learned in high school, I picked up a lot of knots because uh, we were doing like a technical theater uh, competition type thing. Mm -hmm. And one of the categories was the timed, not time. So I was under a lot of pressure to learn these pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna show you some handy knots, uh, ones that we use in theater. Uh, two of them, uh, they teach you in like the scenic class. And one of them, they don't. So that's a real mystery one for you guys. And if you haven't taken the class, you will eventually. And when you learn knots, you're gonna be like, I'm already a pro, guys. I'm way ahead of you. Like, yeah, yeah you'll be that guy. Excellent. Uh, so today we're gonna start called the square knot. Um, if any of you guys wanna follow along, uh, any sort of string will work. Uh, Caitlin's using a shoelace, so Very long any sort of twine, shoelace, if you have rope, that'd be great, but if you're yeah. using a shoelace, that's also fine. Yeah, it seems uh, to be Just any sort of loose, stringy yeah. Yeah, choice. Alrighty. Well, I think let's go ahead and get started. So you said this one's called the square knot, right? The square knot. Okay. Uh, it's a very simple one. It's a great introduction to your one. So you're going to take two ends of your rope. Uh, and you're going to go right over your left like this and then just cross it like that. Okay. Ah, oh no, I can't grab it. All right, I got her. <laughs> and then you do left over your right. Left over your right. And you just cross those. Okay. And then it looks like I like two. And then you're pull, yeah, like you're going to have like this little thing yeah. like that. And you're going to pull these ends. And you'll have a tight little knot that is not going to go anywhere. Uh, yeah. And my shoelace has different ideas. There we go. Whoa! That one is pretty simple. Ooh. I feel like... Very simple, yeah. What would you say you use this most for? Would you say that this is more of like a rigging one or just like general use? It's kind of just a general use. Um, it's nice if you need to connect two ends of a rope. Or if you like two separate ropes and you those like say you need a longer length of rope uh, you can easily just go over that very simple very strong that's not going anywhere all right or if you need like a little loop like this for something yeah so that would seem pretty simple i'm gonna i'm gonna do it again because sometimes if something's yeah. too simple i think i did it wrong <laughs> all right so i'm gonna start off with both ends and then i cross right over left Right over left. All right. Twist and it. Loop it. All right. And then you're left over right. Left over right. And then I'm going to do the same thing. And then I just pull these ends, right? Yeah, pull the long ends. Nice. Okay, that one seems pretty simple. Um, yeah, as long as you remember right over left and left over right, you're golden. Okay. And then, question that might be obvious, but if I do it backwards, does that matter? Um, I've never tried it. I'm sure it doesn't, as long as you keep it consistent. Yeah, so just like flipping it. You just got Yeah, so it. if you do like left over right and right over left, I'm sure it still work. Gotcha. All right. I like that one. That one's pretty simple. What's your next handy little knot idea? Next one, we're going to be doing the bowling knot. Uh, this is a handy little one. It gives you a nice strong loop. Mm -hmm. Uh. So we're going to take our sh this end and we're going to do like a little flip. So like that. And we're just going to cross. Okay. So your end is on top of uh, this little loop and then you're just going to cross it under. Okay. So you just have this little cross area right here. Yes. Yeah, like that. Um, well, give, give yourself a little... Back. 
All right, there we go. Gave myself a little extra to work with. Okay. Slack is your friend here. Uh, and the more Slack you have, the easier your knots are gonna be. All right. Cool. Uh, so this is where it gets a little tricky. So we're gonna take this little loose end mm -hmm. and we're gonna do a little, a little cross around this. So over this end. Over. And, and around it. And around, okay. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, I don't know if you can see, but I think I'm following along. And then through this circle. Yeah, through that circle. The top one. All right. And then you're just going to hold this nub with uh, your one end of your circle so and the other end of your circle, and you're just going to pull it tight. And the other end of my circle. Okay. Whoa! Did I do it? I made a little circle. Yeah. Now you got right. a bow and knot. Whoa. So I've heard this one a lot, the bow and knot. It's um, a pretty famous one. It's usually the first one they teach you. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty common. What do you typically use this one for? Uh, because it's very adjustable, but also gives you a nice strong uh, circle. It's not, it's not going to slip. It's not going to uh, loosen or get bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, it just stays the way it is. It's also not going to tighten. Uh, it's good to wrap around something if you need, like carry up to like a higher area or if you just need like a loop, a large loop to hook onto something. Gotcha. Uh, it's a nice one. Uh, a lot of people use it. Uh, a lot of sailors use it too. So yeah. That's interesting. It's also a nautical knot. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting how like a lot of the technical theater, you know, um, the history behind it sometimes comes back to like sailors. So yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. I like that knot. I think... Maybe we should do it again. I think maybe doing each of them twice might be helpful for me at least. I'm yeah, let's just lock it in there. Yeah, all right. So I start here like this, and then this is my shorter side, all right. And then I make like a wrap around. And you do like a little wrap. And now my shorter side's over here, through the circle. Yeah. All right, gonna give so it- You create this like little loop. It's a very basic loop. Yeah. Okay. And then, okay. And then try and give yourself some slack. Yeah. Okay. And then I remember we cross over through. You cross over through. Oh. So I go behind. No. Nah. Cross. So I go behind. Over. Yeah. Cross around. Go behind this little loop. And then through. And then through I'm there. Pull. And you want to pull it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Whoa. There you go. I like this one. Now really you guys are not tying like pros already. I know. This is pretty neat. It's interesting how many of these can like also be used for just like daily tasks if you needed to. It's pretty clever. I've used, yeah, I've used it plenty of times for other stuff. So the first two ones that you just showed us were, um, general but also used in theater um and they're usually yeah. taught in classes are there any that you you know maybe we don't get taught that often uh the one they don't really show because again they only the only time you learn knots at Palsy Lomage is from the basic senior class and they only teach you three knots uh which were two of them were the first ones uh this one i learned for again like a theater technical theater competition i had to learn like eight knots it was a lot Wow. Uh, but this is a nice, fun one. It's a little, little at first, uh, but once you get the hang of it, you're just you're doing it super fast. So I call it, it's called the butterfly knot. Butter. Um, this one you kind of use your hand for. Okay. So you're gonna, yeah, uh, you're just gonna cross it along your hand. Okay. Go behind and it. And then you're gonna, and you're gonna cross. Uh, diagonally. Okay, oh, but I'm still like pinching my thumb to keep it closed. Yeah, just keep it. You're just keeping the rope right there. Okay, and then so I make. Then you, you, yeah, so cross it behind your um, diagonally across the back of your hand, uh -huh. and then straight on the front. Yeah. And then wrap it in like a little X behind your hand. Yeah. Let me pull it and make mine longer. There we go. All right, I have an X. Then cross it in front of your hand. 
Yeah. So like kind of crossing over my thumb. Yeah. Okay. And then this little loose part will go directly under that. Uh, this loose part? Do I wrap it completely around again? No, you just kind of have to keep it under there. Oh, this Got part. See. Yes. Yeah. My long. You just want to keep it under there. Your long end, just keep it under there. Under. Okay. And then you're going to take this top part and you're just going to do like a little loop under that part. So I'm going to like grab it and then like hook it under. Yeah, hook it under. You're just going to do a little loop around it. And then you're just going to pull it through. Oh, whoa. And then I pull these two long. Pipes. Yeah. That looks so interesting. Mm -hmm. I feel like, whoa. And what was this one called again? The butterfly knot. Butterfly knot. I wonder why it's called that. It doesn't, it doesn't look like one to me, but maybe. Maybe in like the process of like how like you have like the little cross or it could look yeah. butterfly-ish. I have no idea. No, I totally I don't see. Know why. That's an interesting way to look at it. All right, I think I'm ready to do it again. I am optimistic. All right. So I'm gonna start with my hand like this. Let's do it again, just give a little. Gotta untie my one sec. <laughs> that one's hard to untie. I tightened it a little too much, I think. Yeah. So yeah, so so your hand like that. Just kind of go around your thumb and then cross it diagonally on the back of your hand. Yes. She's here. And then go like I guess parallel that way. Mm -hmm. And then go back behind your hand, but this time doing a little X. Yeah. And then wrapping that back and doing the little front thing. Yes. And then this part. So you should have an X on your back. On the back of your hand, you should have two X. You should have a little X. Mm -hmm. And on the front, you should have two parallel lines. And your long end uh, is just going to go directly under there like that. Cool. And then you just take this loop and go under those two uh, lengths. So first I go like over them and then I tuck it. Yeah. Under. Just tuck it like under. Okay. And so from here, what am I pulling on? I'm gonna take my hand out and then I have this little loop on top. Uh, you're gonna pull these two bottom ones and then your finger through here. And then uh, yeah, you're, you're just gonna pull it. So it's gonna be like, oh, I really like the way this part looks in the front. Like it's very, I don't know if you can tell, my beauty blogger. <laughs> wow, that was pretty cool. So, yeah. What do we use this one for the most often, do you think? This is a nice quick little loop. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not as adjustable as a bowlin, so you wouldn't really be using it for like tying around things, but say you had like, you needed to connect it to like a carabiner or something. Yeah. Uh, you need like a little loop tied to it, so you can just clip the carabiner onto there, and then that can attach to something. And then if you wanted, you could do the same thing on the other end, if you're gonna attach like that, or if you need to wrap around something, you'd probably use a different knot, but. Right here, you have a nice quick little loop that's not gonna go anywhere and you can like wrap around something or clip onto something. Yeah, and so is this one, cause I know we just said that the Bolin one is a bit more adjustable. Is this one like fixed? Like you can't really adjust it once you have it. It's kind of fixed. Yeah, like while you're doing it, you're kind of just like, you wrap it on your hand and then, so you're not gonna really be able to pull it or anything and like adjust it. Mm -hmm. So it's certain sizes, it kind of just it kind of just happens. Interesting. Okay, cool. That's so neat. Yeah. Um, well, now that you showed me them, I really appreciate that. Um, what is a knot that maybe might be a little challenging to teach over Zoom? But what do you think is like the coolest knot that you learned how to do? When I learned uh, that was really tricky uh, is the. Nice one if you have, uh, if you need the rope to uh, go around like a fixed hole, like say you have a fixed loop and you need to like just make a knot that would end up behind there and not move at all. 
Mm-hmm. You just figure it follow through. Um, so I'm not. I'm gonna try and explain it. If you want, you can try it. But yeah. again, it's very complicated. So you create this little um, eight mm-hmm. by crossing this over that, and then behind there, you have a little eight, and then looping that through the top hole until you have this little shape. Mm-hmm. Then give yourself like a ton, ton of slack. And that's just like loosening it so you have more rope to work with. Yeah, if you're needing a lot of slack for this one. Gotcha. Like slack is your best friend with this. Then you're just gonna follow it through. The way I was taught is like you're get, say there's like a little path right here. Uh, you're gonna be this little end is gonna be following along that path. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna follow do this one. And then making sure you follow along that path. Uh, now it's kind of like right here. Whoa. Going around your little eight formation. Mm-hmm. This is where it gets tricky because you really need a lot of slack for it. And you're gonna wrap it around that little eight piece. I've gotten lost. <laughs> yeah, then you're gonna wrap it around this piece and go back into the hole where you started. Yeah. Whoa. And pull it tight. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that one looks like it's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Uh, the way I learned it was like they they gave us like a little eye hook. Yeah. And we had to make it, and we had to make it around that hook. Yeah. So it stayed inside there. That's interesting. Um, Cause I've, I've gone rock climbing before and I know that that's the one that they use to attach to harnesses. Um, so it must be pretty safe. Um, and it's pretty- Yeah, if you're gonna be like, if you're gonna be like high up in the air, I'd want a pretty safe knot. Yeah. But yeah, see again, like transferring knots, like a lot of these knots aren't exclusive to technical theater. Yeah. They're can. gonna be, you can use them in like a ton of different places. Yeah, that was so interesting. Well, thank you so much. Um, that one was probably gonna be really challenging for me to do with my shoelace. So I honestly just a little bit. <laughs> trance. That was pretty fun to watch. Um, but thank you so much for teaching us and giving me myself a bit of a refresher. And also maybe for those of us who had never learned this before. Um, just yeah, of course. Quick, easy tutorial. And this is obviously something that you guys can follow along with today or it's something that you know it's going to be on the youtube channel and you guys can look back to it if you ever need like oh what's that not i learned um so this was really handy and i appreciate it um especially because i know that a lot of people have been kind of wondering um if we can start doing more workshops about theater or um, technical theater specifically so this was a pretty you know good first workshop i appreciated the uh, the lesson and uh, yeah of course I know this was one that you were really excited to teach us, but I know that- I wanted to do it for a couple of years now, yeah. Yeah. So finally got the chance to do it. Yeah, I know. It's like you've been asking, you know, that you've wanted to do it and a lot of people have shown interest. So thank you. Um, I also would be really interested to hear like, you know, what the other students would be excited to see and to learn. So if you guys want to, in the chat box, give us some suggestions for future workshops. I know. Cameron, myself, and the rest of Theater Threshold and Artists in Black would be super down to put them on for you guys. So. Yeah, drop a comment and we'll get back to you guys. And hopefully we can try to pick some that go well over Zoom. Yeah, that's gonna be definitely something that we're gonna work with. But we appreciate everyone's patience and also just, you know, have fun with it. It was a pretty cool lesson. I have now learned how to tie three pretty dope knots. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Cameron, for this wonderful lesson. I really appreciate it. Yay. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you at the next workshop. Bye. See you then.